Hi people, welcome. This is the I Wish I Didn't Quit podcast and I am your host, Nate. Now before we get on to today's guest, I'm going to tell you about my website which is www.iwishidentquit.com and on there you will find a list of all the podcasts that have been recorded so far you'll also find links to get a copy of my book which is called i wish i didn't quit music lessons which is a guide to help parents really inspire their children to musical excellence and not only that but i also have t-shirts available now and i wear these t-shirts quite often especially times when you know i need to put effort in times when i'm in the gym for example because you know how it is sometimes you're in the gym or you're doing something that requires a lot of concentration and sometimes you need that extra motivation just to get you over the over the edge you know and these t-shirts really help me looking at the t-shirts while i'm working out i see that word quit i wish i didn't quit and i just think to myself i need to squeeze out that extra rep get just push that weight up a little bit more run a bit faster on the treadmill run a bit longer because i know at the end of the day when i go home the next day when i see those gains you know (laughs) i'm not i'm not gonna be able to say i wish i didn't quit that just gives me that extra little motivation so make sure you get your t-shirts get your hoodies before christmas we've got about 10 days left until christmas now so make sure you go and get those i'll send them out to you as soon as possible so hopefully you can get them in time and ready for Christmas, in time for the new year to start your new year, right. So on to today's guest is none other than Brittany Habib, who was a former Canadian gymnast who represented Canada in the Commonwealth Games and a few other competitions internationally. It was really interesting sitting with her. I was in Toronto in October and we sat down to talk about her route all the way to the Canadian national team, the struggles that she faced and how she was able to overcome those um, in very interesting, difficult circumstances. There's a lot of things that I didn't know about, you know, what it takes to really get to the top of any profession and the, the amount of hours, dedication, the support that she had from her parents, um, from her coaches and the dedication and the effort that she put in herself um, is pretty remarkable. And even through all of that, it was it was quite amazing to hear her say that she even regrets a lot of that and you'll hear it in the podcast you'll hear how she breaks everything down and how she talks about her voice that she didn't really have at that point in her life but now because she's a gymnastics coach she set up a a initiative for young women to really give them their voice so that they don't have to go through some of the things that she went through you know all about self-love it's all about understanding and being comfortable in yourself and she's really inspiring these young women to really go out and to be to not only be great gymnasts but to be great women in today's society so check out this episode it was a great podcast to record and i hope you learned something from it here is Brittany habib at what point do people start listening are you gonna edit this probably not it's just it's it's just gonna flow it's all good okay it's all good i'm nervous don't be nervous my pits are sweating i didn't need to know that but that's honesty <laughs> you said you wanted me to be honest i do want you to be honest yeah okay because i'm i'm for real i'm a little nervous right now there's no need honestly like this is just it's calm <gasps> it's just a conversation we just want to know about your life because your life sounds pretty pretty interesting okay <laughs> Well, welcome to the to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. So introduce yourself. My name is Brittany Habib. I'm a Torontonian and um, I'm not sure what else you'd like to know. Anything, anything. Just give us some one fact that you never told anyone before. One fact. Okay, not that you never told anyone, but I know that's like pretty. That's getting pretty deep too fast. Like I know. (laughs) Ten seconds in. Oh my goodness. Just, just something that people might not know about you um i don't know i can knit i knit like a lot or just every now and again no like i can knit like i've knit like cardigans and sweaters yeah yeah (laughs) when did you learn that uh maybe like two years ago and for for what it just seemed like a fun hobby and i love fall and in fall you can wear these gorgeous sweaters and layers and i was like hey why not try to knit this myself so i tried it so are you selling them actually i have sold some okay i have i have sold but my yarn because you know i always want the best quality and the best of the best it's 
fairly expensive. I yeah. get like top grade. All of my yarn is imported from Peru. You know, it's like oh snap. I wear like I only knit with like cashmere and like it's like good stuff because it's on my skin and it yeah, takes yeah. so long to knit a cardigan. That's like two months. So I have two, to make two months. How many hours? So, uh, you know, it takes a few hours. <laughs> I don't know how many hours. How many hours per day? I mean, how many hours? If you, if we said okay, um, I need a sweater. Right. How many hours is it gonna take you? Like ten My hours to goodness. make five hours? I've no I've no concept of what it takes to um, knit. Um I mean, so a infinity scarf, for example, would probably take me about ten hours. What is an infinity scarf? Oh, really? Sorry. In London, you guys don't know what this I, is? Maybe we call it something else. I don't know. Okay, do you know the scarf that's shaped in a circle? It's a circular scarf. It's just a circular scarf. Yes, but the ends are connected. It's a circular scarf. That's called an infinity scarf. It's called a weird scarf. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, but okay. Okay, it's like a snood, right? Like, I think that's what we call it, like a snood, something like that. I have no idea. This is okay. going to be a difficult interview because our lingo is, is just it's, so it different. Is. So, so basically, we're in Canada. <laughs> we're in Canada. We're in Toronto right now. Yes. And I'm learning the, the local oh language. Oh boy, please don't say A in this and, interview. And oh <laughs> A. This oh is, this, I thought... Okay, I thought when Drake does it, does it in his songs, oh right? I thought it was just like a like a filler. Oh. Like an um or an R or something. But he's mm. like, hey, he's always saying hey. Is he that, does. Is that is that because he's from Toronto? I mean, obviously, we've got our own lingo here. It's just hey, uh, 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 hey, hey, hey. I mean, there's different contexts in which you can use it. It's not really just a filler. Sometimes it could be like a question, like yeah. I'm not sure. I, it, it's hard for me to put that on the spot right now. Okay, so let me put it. Let me put it in a question then, right? So, I know you are you're a gymnast, but you're not any regular gymnast, right? So you've done some pretty cool stuff as a gymnast. <laughs> yes, once upon a time in my lifetime, I was a gymnast uh -huh. a few years ago. Uh huh. Several years ago, I should say. Okay. So what did you do? Because like I find it really fascinating. I don't know that much about gymnastics okay. personally. Um, but obviously, you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh so man. So like how, how far did you go? Did you like perform like in competitions or anything? Or right. So like I appreciate that you put me, you know, on this podcast to do this interview. But for me, like I, f I for real am nervous because it's like talking about myself and yeah. putting myself fully out there. And like if you could feel my heart right now, it's like boom, boom, boom. Like it's beating fast because I feel like it's nerve wracking to talk about myself. And now you want me to just like say everything. We just that jump, we just jump all of in, my like, accomplishments. Like I don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously, that like, <sighs> people will listen to this because um, you no, know, they want to. I mean, we all face difficult times in it, like when we're trying to write something or we're trying to trying to make some music or, mm. or just trying to get through jobs or whatever. So, you know, you've from 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 what I know already, you've done some stuff that I'm sure a lot of people can maybe be able to draw from inspiration mm. from. So, OK, so once upon a time, I was on the Canadian National Gymnastics what? team. <laughs> yes. One more time. Say that one more time. No, I think time. they heard it. <laughs> All right, go okay. on, go on. Um, yes, and I did. I traveled internationally. Um, my teenage years was, you know, I was traveling a lot around the world, doing a lot of international competitions. I suppose some of my highlighted competitions would have been, you know, the Commonwealth Games in Australia. I did the World Championships in Denmark. I went to the Pan Am Championships in Brazil. So there was a lot. I got a lot of culture growing up and seeing a lot of different parts of this world. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. So mm. we've got to go from the start. How did you oh even boy. get into gymnastics <laughs> okay. in the first place? Um, when my mother had kids, she just loved, she had this passion for gymnastics. Don't know why she didn't do it. I think okay. just growing up, it was just something she loved or wanted to do herself. She was really big into track and field, but she was like, as okay. soon as I have girls, that's the sport. It's gymnastics. So she had my sister right away it was gymnastics you know two years later i was born i was in it right away i started at 19 months and that 19 was 19 months yes i did well, what can you do at 19 months oh man you know you go in and you walk on the little beams you have your little baby hands and you hold on to the bars and you just walk around and 
There's you things kidding? I'm serious. I'm, you know what? Coming from like like from the musical background, most mm. of the time like you find kids starting to play, getting get involved in music. Like apart from just you know walking up to pianos and just hitting them, right? right. Like yeah. lessons at maybe four or five years old, but mm. nineteen months. I know. I mean, I think that's a little extreme. So if people are listening to this, are like, wow, like in order to get on the national team, you got to start at nineteen months. Absolutely not. I mean, no. I would suggest try a lot of different sports really see what you and your child loves because this was something my mother loved so for yeah. her it was like this is what you're doing okay <laughs> and it just happened to be that i was just really really blessed by above the spirits the orishas god whatever you believe in i was just naturally blessed with this talent so it was not necessarily something that i loved doing but i was just blessed with this talent so yeah yeah you know it was like you're gr- you're good at it so keep going <laughs> so so what was that like so you're 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 not okay i'm sure you don't remember when you're 19 months right of course not but like what's your earliest memories of, of my being earliest a memory was probably five years old um i was at a competition um because at yes the age of five. at five i do remember do you think that's too early to- i i think that yes and no yes and no because i think it's good to have an idea of what you're getting into and what it's like to compete um but the other side of me is like i think that's just a little bit young for competitive Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think so okay Mm -hmm. and then from there that's so what's that what's that memory oh yes so i was on the beam and i was doing my routine and i completely forgot the routine (laughs) so i'm in the middle of the beam and i turn to my coach and i'm like what do i do like (laughs) what what do i do from here and she's like finish the routine i was like oh okay (laughs) so that's one big memory that i have so so please explain for anyone who doesn't know what a beam is good that's a good question what is a beam in gymnastics there are four events there's the uneven bars there's the balance beam and that's the one that's long and is about four inches wide there's the vault where you run you bounce on the board and you flip off and then there's a floor exercise where you dance and you tumble. Okay. So you so how, how does it like before we get into that? Sure. You're five years old and you're yes. on the beam. Yes. And it's do they do they um change the, the width of it like according oh, to no. how old you are? Or of course you're straight not. on the You're on the four inches wide, you just you just it's the same thing. It does not switch. The only thing that can change is the height. When you're okay. younger, the beam can be a little bit lower. Yeah, because imagine you can't you can't put a five year old on something that that's I mean, that high. How high is it when you're like at the top level? Like at the top level, I think it's hundred and twenty five centimeters. Okay, all right. So it's not that it's not that high. It's not too high. Okay, it's not that high. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. All right. Mm-hmm. So five years old, you're already competing. I was, yes. And then, so what happens from there? Like, what's what's your story from from being nineteen months I know. starting to. You know, on all these different disciplines to eventually ending up, you know, representing your country all over the world. So what's the question? How, how, did, <laughs> how do you get how do you get from that point? to? Um, I think a lot of positive support, um, having to push through the I don't want to pushing through the I can't pushing through the I just really don't want to be here. Um, but also having that balance of people seeing your talent. Yeah. I know that when I was maybe seven, six to maybe nine, I had a phenomenal coach from China okay. and she didn't speak much English. But when she saw me, she started coaching me. She saw something in me and she pushed me and she pushed me really, really hard. But she saw something that a lot of other people probably didn't see. And she would work me. And, you know, I think when I turned about eight, uh, she actually had to leave the country for a little bit. Okay. And she sent my parents a letter and said, you know, if by, you know, eight and a half or nine years old, she's not doing this skill, that skill, this skill, and that skill, you need to, t- you know, take her out of this gym and have her move some else place or somewhere else because this girl has potential. Oh, wow. So I think that was really, really the first big, like, okay, like this, this girl can maybe go somewhere because she saw that in me. And yeah. By eight and a half, nine years old, my mother was on it. So when I was not doing those skills, she was like, all right, it's time to move clubs. And my mother moved me. And then by nine, and I was at a different club mm-hmm. and I started doing those skills. So we kind of just, she kind of just kept me on that path. Yeah. 
So what skills are those? Because oh, like I said gosh. before, my <laughs> my knowledge of gymnastics, I like to I like to learn. I'm sure people listening want to learn as well. So like, what kind of skills are you talking about? Because I'm just thinking about like, if you can do the splits, you're good. Right? Okay. Yes, flexibility is important. Um, but she was talking about some like real skills for a young age. So I don't. This might be challenging to describe. Just go on, go for it. Go for it. Okay. For it. So on the beam. At that age, I was connecting three backhand springs in a row. So that's where you jump to your hands, your legs are on a split, and then you step down. So connecting three of those in a row. One more, one more time, one more time. <laughs> okay. The description one more yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're standing on your feet, you jump backwards to your hands, your legs are in a split, and then you step okay, down. Okay, wait, so when you jump, you jump backwards, so you're basically in a backflip. A backflip. And you're landing on your hands. On your hands. And then you and, and you're balancing on your hands with on your, the beam, your legs on the four inch beam, yes, with my legs in a split. And then you step down and you do the same thing again. You step down, you do the when same. When you say thing step again. down, you mean get off the beam, or you're still on the beam? No, you're still on the beam. So it's just connecting like one, two, three, like three in a row. You know, the <laughs> thing is about this, <laughs> about this beam, yeah. I just in my head, all I can imagine is you when you miss that. Yes. That's in ah, that's insane. So if you okay, because I'm thinking you can miss it and you can you can crack your jaw on there. You can yeah. your elbow, your your leg, like yes. you can get your leg caught and like yes. like. There's a lot of terrifying things that can happen in gymnastics. I I may be biased, but I do believe it is one of the hardest sports in this world because it is so dangerous. Mm. I mean, trying to flip on a four inch wide beam is extremely dangerous. There's a lot of things that can happen, but. As you start practicing, mm -hmm. you learn how to fall. That's important too, is learning okay. how to fall in gymnastics so you don't break your jaw or... That, that sounds head. horrifying. <laughs> like, just to put that, that four inches into context, right? Yeah. That's like, that's basically the width of your foot. It, well, not quite, but... Almost. The width of your foot. You know, you can fit your two feet on there, but you just have to make sure you put one a little bit in front of the other. And you're doing a backflip on that. So yes. like, do you remember the first time you tried that? I don't. I don't remember the first time, but I do remember doing the three back handsprings because that was something for me that was like, that was like a big thing. I was nervous. I was scared. I didn't want to do it. But that Chinese coach, her name was Su Lin. She was yeah. awesome. She was like, she kept me in the gym over hours, you know, until I got it and until I was able to compete it. So that was a big milestone. And my mother, very, you know, into the gymnastics, she was like, you know, you get these three back handsprings, Brittany, like I'm going to get you these nice new shoes. And I remember <laughs> we went to Payless Shoe Source. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Payless Shoes. Yeah. My mother got me the shoes that I always wanted and it was sitting on my dresser and she had it there just sitting on top of the dresser. And it was like, you cannot wear these until you do your three back handsprings so that wow. she had it there for me. So until I did three back handsprings, I couldn't wear these gorgeous, they were like little heels. They were just the nicest thing for an eight year old, you know? Wow. <laughs> so the day I got three back handsprings, I got to put on those shoes and those shoes were called three back handsprings. So that was like a big, <laughs> that was a big, that was a, a big moment in my life. <laughs> wow. So that's eight years old. Yes. So what happens? What happens after that? What happens after that is I had to change clubs. I went to a different gym where I could, you know, get my level, you know, a little bit higher to where Su Lin said I should be at that age. Mm -hmm. And the transition was great for me. Everything in my life worked out in my benefit. A lot of people look down on people at changing clubs. I know it's a big thing to okay. stay at one club and then to grow up with that, you know, one instructor and yeah. have that one team with you, which is a beautiful thing. And if you can find that, I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But in my um my life that didn't quite work out for me so there was a lot of moving to different clubs but i don't put any club down i'm a gymnastics coach right now and i see the beauty in what everyone does yeah and every change that i made was beneficial for me and necessary for me to get to where i needed to be so don't follow one specific path and don't think that you have to do something a certain way because mm. what works for you is what's going to work for you and you need to be strong about that yeah so as a, as a gymnast though like there must be a lot of um a lot of the things you do are, are alone aren't they 
are they they're so I mean it feels like it, a lot of the, because because you're essentially you're solo you're not you don't you don't gym, you don't gymnasticize <laughs> That's I, don't know, I don't know with anyone else do you? I mean <laughs> you, you, I mean you're not like it's not like synchronized swimming or, right. or, or relay I get or, what you're saying or, or, or you know, it's, it's not like that. You're, yes. you're by yourself. You are. It is a very, very individual sport. Yeah. I mean, as you're young, you've got your little teammates and yeah. it's fun and you've got more fun happening. But as you start going up the ladder, you know, friends start falling down because not it's rare to find a group of girls that are just going to move up together at the yeah. same time, the same level. Yeah. That's just a rare thing to do. So. Yes, when I was young, I had eight years old. I did have a group of about five or six of us, which was amazing. But then as I started going up in levels and going up in age, you know, that five group went to, you know, four and four went to three and yeah. three went to one. And I remember being 13 and I was the only one in that gym at that level. Um, and that was tough. It was it was really tough because then I didn't even have people my age that I could really mm. communicate with. and be within the gym and much less I didn't have friends in school because I was training six hours a day. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't even like I, I had school friends to be like, okay, I don't, you know, I could, I don't have gymnastics friends, but I've got school friends. I didn't have those either. So <laughs> when my group came to just me, it's, it was really challenging, especially when your best friend in gymnastics decides, you know what, this is not for me anymore. I, you know, I want to stay in school more often. I want to go on school trips. You know, I want to hang out. I want to you know, live that social life, which yeah. is what you should be doing at that age. But that was really tough for me when all of my best friends started to make that decision yeah. and transition and say, you know what, I can't handle this anymore. This is not for me. It doesn't matter how much talent I have. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. So, so what's different about you? Like, why did you stick with it? How, like, yeah, mm. what, what kept you going all those times? That's, that is such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good question. What kept me going? Um, and this is honesty here. I didn't have a voice. I know this probably doesn't sound good because I didn't really like the sport. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really like the sport. But again, that natural ability and that natural talent was just always in the back of my head. Like if you're good at it, like you might as well just keep trying because mm -hmm. look at where you are right now. Like you have potential of making the national team. And when I made the national team, I was like, you know, you're not half bad because I never thought I was good. I didn't ever think I didn't ever believe that I should be where I was because I never thought I was that good. I knew I had something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So... A big thing that kept me going was um, the benefits that came with it. I know that sounds weird. No, 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 not at all. Go ahead. <laughs> so for me, I guess some of the benefits were was, um, I don't know, like being in front of the camera, doing some commercial work, like, you know, being a spokesperson for like HBC Canada and different, I was... Um, an actress or in Payless sh Shoes commercial, um, I did a stage performance where they needed a, a young dancer that could flip. And so just being in that entertainment side of the industry, mm -hmm. I love that, like lights, camera, action, photo shoots, that side of things, I loved. And what gymnastics could bring me from okay. that, it was like, okay, like I have to do this hard work, but I can maybe get another commercial or I could get a photo shoot and, that whole side of things, like I love that. I love that side of. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how old were you when you were doing those those commercials? I think that the first huge live performance was for like CBC Foster Parent Plan Gala. They were doing this big thing for these kids in Africa. Um, I think I was eight years old <laughs> for that one. So that was like my first huge stage performance. I think the Payless commercial. I was maybe thirteen. Okay. Um, HBC. I was probably 14-ish. So it, it staggered, but throughout that, there was just always something that came up for me that I just, I loved. I loved being in front of the camera and, and doing that entertainment side of things. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you did a, a competition and that was, it was like, um, it was rec not recorded, but it was, it was like live on, on TV or something. Oh my goodness. Um, yes. And I think that, um, again, because I, I feel like when I was doing gymnastics, I was always just a vessel. I wasn't really present. <laughs> so um, I went to this one huge competition. I think I was in Brazil. 
And there was these huge jumbotrons like all around me because yeah. this is like official. I think this was the Pan Am Championships. So there was these big uh, jumbotrons around me. There was cameras everywhere. You know the types in the movies where it's got like the levers and everything. Yeah. When you're running down the vault, the camera's running with you on a like a wheelie thing. Yeah. Um. So I was in the middle of a floor routine, and I saw myself on the jumbotron. In the middle of a, of, a, of a what? Oh, sorry. In the middle of a floor routine. So I was oh, doing. Oh, floor routine. Okay. Yes, cool. I was doing like my floor exercise and I was in the middle of the routine and I saw myself on the jumbotron and you know you should be concentrating like you've got big skills coming up but I'm like yo like that's me <laughs> oh my gosh so I'm running down this the floor about to tumble and I'm dancing and I'm seeing myself on the jumbotron I'm like everyone like they could see me like the camera chose me I can't believe this <laughs> so crazy so that was huge. But it was also a little bit distracting because you really have to get that concentration in order because, I mean, also at large competitions like that, all of the um, events are elevated. It's on a podium. So also as, so on a podium, how do we describe this? So for s smaller competitions, everything's just on the floor. The events, the vault bars, beam and floor is on the floor. And then okay. as you go to larger international competitions, the events become elevated. So they're... You, you, mean, you mean like the individual... Um, parts apparatuses. Are, yeah, they're, they're raised. They're raised. Okay. That's okay. right. So okay. that's also another really big thing that's a it can be overwhelming too, that now okay. it's like, okay... You have to walk upstairs and stand on the podium until it's okay. Here. Okay, I see right. Mean, yeah. So it's like a big, it's a big difference. So for me, that was like, wow, like, you know, the cameras, the cameras that that are following you, the TV screens, the podium. It was just, it was a lot to take in. Needless to say, that was the competition that uh, when I was running down the vault, I uh, broke my finger, stuck out to the the, the other side of uh, my hand. <laughs> Whoa, 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 so, so, <laughs> let's, 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 okay, let's just, let's, before we get there, I feel like there's so much to unpack with this, I right? know. So, your first competition. First competition? Yeah. That was, wait, which one? So, your first, this, the one you're talking about right now, mm -hmm. this Pan, Pan. The Pan Am Championships. What, what is the Pan Am Championships? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What does that mean? I think it's the Pan American Games, if I'm correct. Okay, so what what is that? I, I don't think you should ask me that. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> all right, all right, we'll scratch, we'll scratch know, that. We'll I know, I know. I'm so sorry. No, no, it's cool, it's cool. So, what <laughs> happened with your finger? Like, oh, okay, so um, gosh, this this is just such a difficult interview for me because I, whenever I speak, I have so many details for stories, and I I just don't want to bore the people. No, no, go for it. Go oh my for goodness. it. So 13 to 18, you know, this is where I started to get to the national team. When, was the, when was the first, like, because before you get to the national team, surely you have to do like regionals and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I know there's so much to talk about. So when was the first, <laughs> because, all right, so, oh boy. so you're, you're, you're a young gymnast, you're doing your thing, okay. you've got this teacher, she's just like, yeah, I'm going to push you, I'm going to push you, she pushes you, Su you're Lin, doing well. Yeah, Chinese. Su Lin, yes, big she's up awesome. Su Lin. Yeah, she's awesome. Wherever and you are, Su Lin, I wish I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hope she's listening. I know. Um, so yeah, Su Lin's pushing you, you're doing well. Yes. Um, when, do you remember the first time you got kind of, I don't know, how does it work? You get, does someone watch you and is like, hey, we want to bring you through to the, to the like regional tournament yeah. or how does it work so i'll try to do this as quick as possible so once i left that gym i went to another gym and it was great for me because i learned the skills that sulin said i should be doing by that age mm -hmm. um i improved a lot and at this point in gymnastics there was three levels there's levels one two and three okay after level three you can attempt for the national level okay at this time, things are different now. So when I went to this gym, after a couple years or so, I went to level three, which is like a, a pretty good level before we get to the next phase. Um, and- are these, are these, sorry, are these levels like arbitrary? Are they, are they kind of, um, do you have to do certain things? Like if you can, if you can do three of those- Back handspring, absolutely. Yeah, does that mean, okay, now you're on this level? That, or, exactly. is it, or is it more like, um, when they score you, like you're getting these, these right. kind of scores consistently, so they kind of after a while kind of give you a, 
Uh, yeah, no, you emoji. you said it exactly right. Each level, there are certain requirements that you need. Yeah. So you would have to do like harder skills. I would say skills like, you know, back handspring layout, you know, that's probably a level three skill. But if you're doing just a single back handspring, you know, that's probably a level two. And I'm talking about on the beam. There's, again, there's four apparatuses. So, um, yes, each level that you're going up in, skills are being elevated as well. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. So, um I went to this gym, I competed level three, and of course, everywhere you go in life, there's like the names out there, like, look out for this person, look out for that yeah. person, and everyone's always looking out for those people, and I think just out of nowhere, you know, just walking around in this vessel, you know, I did this huge competition, which is the provincial, comp the provincial championships okay. for the level three, and... um my slow and steady win, like they say slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. That competition that worked really well for me because I won the provincial championships for level three, which was just not expected. The, like even the girl who thought she was going to win, she was getting ready to stand up. Like it was like, and first place. And she, this girl was standing up because she <laughs> knew it was her. And they're like, Brittany Habib. And I'm looking around like, yo, that's me. What? Wow, wow. So that was just like, crazy for me because i even saw her walking up i'm like yeah like she should be winning yeah um so that was you know pretty cool for me and after that oh man there's just so much to talk about <laughs> nate i don't know i feel like we need to like break this in half or something like this and do like <laughs> like a part two or i something. know but so after that you know you when you live when you win level three it's like okay you can try probably try for national now at this gym and again i don't put any gym down like i'm very thankful and blessed everyone did something very great for me but at this point the coach or the new coach that was there didn't believe that i could be national they okay. said that i had reached my top and this is where i need to stay um my mother disagreed and <laughs> she was like absolutely not like she just won level three she can at least try for the nationals um, but they th thought, you know, because of this, because of that, we like, don't know of, the reasoning. Because of what? Like, why, why would they, why would they say <laughs> to someone who's just won at level three right. that you're not going to get any further than that? Um, I don't know. Like, I, again, I don't put anyone down, but maybe it was because, um, l different coaches look for specific things. I, you know, they could be looking for body type. They could okay. be looking for the way someone's feet point. They could be looking for basic technique. And maybe the things that this specific coach was looking for, I didn't have it at all. Okay. There was no way they were even going to try to push for that with me. Um, and I think that's why it's important to always try to have someone that has your back that believes that if you are good at something, push for that. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you don't have anybody in your corner, you know, sometimes it's hard to stick up for yourself as well. And at that yeah. young age, I had no idea. So... At that point, when they said absolutely not, my mother was like, oh, heck no. It's time to move gyms again. <laughs> so then it was time to go to a different gym again. And um, we decided to go out to a gym that was pretty far away, um, about 40 to 50 minutes away from my house. Okay. Um, and for this gym, you obviously had to try out to see if you were worthy <laughs> or good enough to even make this program because going to this gym with a drive like that you know, it meant serious business now. Like before I was practicing maybe four hours a day, maybe four and a half, transitioning into this gym, you know, trying to get to this national level, we're looking at five and a half, six hours a day, six days a week. I mean, we're transitioning wow. into something really big. You know, before I could stay at school all day and maybe I had one day where it was a half day. Mm. This new program was you go to school and you leave at 12 o'clock every single day because practice starts at one, you don't leave until 6.30, 7, 8, maybe 9 if you are not finished your task. You know, very tough rushing coaches. Um, and a big commitment for my parents as well, you know, having to drive 50 minutes, 50 minutes there, pick me up, 50 minutes back. They're entrepreneurs. So it was a big shift for everyone. I mean, even my sister, she was a very talented gymnast. And to be frank with you, she loved gymnastics. Mm -hmm. You know, she had a passion for gymnastics. And I was just that little girl that was like, I want to do everything my sister does. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. my goodness, sisters. Oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> um, and at that point, um, which I like I 
feel unfortunate about she actually had to stop gymnastics because at you know my or my mother you know really thought okay my younger daughter Brittany's got all this potential we're going to start investing in her and you know pushing her forward and I wasn't even the one that loved gymnastics like that. It was wow. my sister, and my sister was, like, hardworking. Like, she's a mate. Like, she's got all these great attributes. And just because, you know, that natural ability wasn't there and I had it, it was like, we're going to, you know, use Brittany, and we're going to push her and yeah. push her forward. And as hard as that was for me, I mean, again, I didn't really have, have a voice. I was just like, this is my way. This is my direction. This is what I'm going to do. And I keep my mouth shut and just do what I'm going to do. So... Here we go, next phase, yeah. new gym. So, so, so. With, even with, with your school, so like, you're, you're, how does this work? Mm -hmm. So be, is it because you're on that level, you can, you know, your parents or, or the gym contact your school and say, hey, you know, Brittany's on this level, so right. we're gonna take her out of school. Exactly like okay. that. It's exactly along those lines. Um, you know, once you reach a certain level and you make that commitment, you do, you talk to the principal, you speak to all the teachers and, for the most part, um, pretty understanding. Yeah. And at this point, I think 12, 13, I was still in, I guess, what you would call middle school. I was in the eighth grade. Okay. And then it would so have been... You would have been about, what, 13? Yeah, about that, exactly. Okay. And then after that is grade nine where you start high school. Now, that's mm. when things could get tricky. Mm -hmm. But the high school I went to was one where it was almost like a little university where you kind of teach yourself. You know, you get units... There was mm -hmm. 18 units per course. After each unit, you go to the testing center, you do your tests, make sure you pass. There was lectures here and there for you to learn, but it worked out perfectly for the type of schedule yeah. and life that I was going to live. So that was really great. Needless to say, nothing is ever that smooth. There were many teachers that were not that supportive. Yeah. You know, that was like, she didn't come to my lecture. She's not going to pass. Like, very blunt and straight and, you know, didn't agree with that. Yeah. You know, just believed. I believe in being fair. If you need to, you know, attend this lecture, I don't care if you are traveling the world. I don't care. You, you know, there was that mentality as well wow. that we had to deal with. Yeah. Um, so, again, it was good to have my parents there to, you know have a meeting and say, okay, is there something we can do to work this out? Like, can she come in on this day? Can we she redo this lecture? Because she needs to, you know, complete schooling because there's possibilities of, of a scholarship and we need to get her, 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 what's it called when you take that test to go to the United States? To go to the States. SATs. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to take, you know, your SATs and stuff like that. So we had to make sure that all of that was solved and in order before anything, so. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. that, because I mean, I guess, I guess for a lot of people um, who aren't sports people, you don't really know the commitment that it takes to get to that point because I think for a lot of a lot of us, <clears throat> and maybe it's different in can, in, in I was going to say Canada, <laughs> in Canada, <laughs> maybe it's different in Canada, different in the US. Um, but for us, I feel like in, in England, um, it's you fit everything around school, so okay. school is always most important. Yeah, okay. for, I mean, I could be totally wrong. Yeah. I don't I don't know anyone who's who's been in a similar situation to you where they've been right. taken out of school half days right yeah at that point in life mm -hmm. you know what i mean yes. um so i can't even imagine how how much of an adjustment that must be for your even just so socially yeah being in school and being like that kid who everyone knows but not really because yeah. we don't we only spend a couple hours a day whereas, absolutely and that was it everyone be like oh you're Brittany the gymnast oh cool what's up like everyone was very nice to me like i the people, ooh, this essential oil smells so nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, everyone was really nice to me, but it was just that, like, oh, Brittany the gymnast. And even, like, I kid you not, I'm pretty sure I saw a couple of high school students last week, and they're like, Brittany Habib, the, are you still doing gymnastics? And I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, and I feel bad, but it's happened to me at least five times this year. And so wow. to know that I still, I had that support, which I didn't even know I had was just really beautiful to know that, you know, people knew of me. I didn't even know that. Wow. <laughs> so that was, but I mean, cool. at that point you're, I mean, even before you get to the national team and everything, like you're getting to a point where people are going to start to know who you are. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> of, I mean, of course, of course. I don't know. I don't think like that. I don't live like that. So I was never walking around like, ooh, like I'm awesome. Because like I told you, I never believed that I was good. Like yeah. even when I look at videos of me competing, I'm so embarrassed because I know the feeling that I had. I was on that floor like I shouldn't be here. I'm not that good. I don't even like I don't even like it was just an embarrassment. It was scary for me to even walk into competitions because I never believed that that's where I should mm. be. So to have a feeling like that, I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to ask you about that in a bit. Sure. Like, I really, I, yeah, I want to ask you about that in a bit. But like, like you're saying that that transition now. So you're about you're about 13, 14 years old. Yes. You're you're practicing six hours a day, which we'll come to as well okay. in a bit. Um, <laughs> So yeah, what, what happens after that? So I try out at this gym that is 50 minutes away. Yeah. And there's this Russian coach that is like intense, like 1980 Olympic and world champion. Like but an actual world champion. Oh, absolutely. Like 100%. Like what was, Olympic champion. What was the, the, his or her name? Uh, okay. Moving on. <laughs> no, no, we'll we'll say her we'll say her name. I oh, don't okay. I, I don't know if it's no. It's just because. Um, okay, we'll talk about the name. It's okay. Her name is. Um, <sighs> I'm just nervous because you know her and I just didn't have the best relationship, and it's you know just because I know that I know that I was difficult to work with. I will put that out there. You don't have to say it if it's gonna be <laughs> if it's gonna be an issue. You don't have to go there. It's all right. Okay, maybe I'll bring her name up in a second, but I just want everyone to know that I'm not putting it on her. Just our relationship was not that good because, you know, I was just a difficult person to work with. <laughs> but, but actually, on a level, do you think that, that that kind of relationship on that level is 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 ever easy? Because I feel like if you're a, if you're a world champion, the expectations you have of yourself are already going to be very high because you you know what it takes, right? Or you so should you, know. Exactly, <laughs> but you've you've been there, so you know to a to a point. You know exactly what you have to do, right? So yeah. if you see someone, it doesn't even matter if they if they really want it that badly or or they don't. If they've got amazing skill of if 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 it's if it's a natural thing or not. If they don't see, essentially what what they saw what they see in themselves. I I don't know if that relationship can ever really be, like. I get what you're saying. You know what that mean? you're saying that it probably stemmed from me because I I wasn't even no, sure. No, no. I think I think far from from you saying yeah, it's it's your it's it's kind of on you why the relationship was was mm. like that. I think I just I just wonder. No, sure. You know, maybe the relationship between the student and someone of that quality, that pedigree, is never it's never great because of because of what they because the expectations how, how, and because, because of the expectations, what they went what, they, what, what they want where they you're want right. you to go you're absolutely how much right. time you've already put in you're absolutely right and i agree i agree with what you're saying and that does make a lot of sense um you know i just i've got my opinions as well which maybe we'll get into <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll see <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> i don't know where you want to go from there yeah so you've got this russian teacher yes um and and he or she is is pushing you yeah like you know she's extremely extremely strict she's just a tiny little russian lady and uh -huh. just tiny but impactful like yeah like she knows what she wants and you know she's technique wise technically she is amazing and i hand it down to her you know part of the reason why i'm such a great um competitive coach is because of her because of how she strives for excellence like everything was about technique and it it didn't matter if you were close to technique did you do it the way that i asked you to do it like how like the way that each skill has is broken down i got to understand on a completely different level because of her mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the technique behind each skill the way that you need to jump the way that your hand needs to be the placement of your big toe all of those little things mm -hmm. i learned from her and i i apply that to my coaching mm -hmm. so it was impactful for me that way, you know, but just at the time, it's very challenging because nothing was ever good enough. There was mm -hmm. nothing that was ever good yeah. enough. It didn't matter that I went to the Ukraine and I came first on floor at an international competition. And, you know, I'm standing on that podium with the Canadian flag and these flowers in my hand and they're playing the national Canadian national anthem in Ukraine. Like, what are you kidding me? Like on a podium, <laughs> like that's huge. Yeah. Didn't matter how awesome that was. My beam routine was not good enough. So like, 
why like, why are you celebrating type of like it just it just seemed like wow. nothing was ever good enough and yeah. no matter where i went i felt that for myself and maybe that's a self reflection on me that you know maybe i needed to maybe look past that and see the good in, in what i was doing too but it was just very challenging for me that i didn't feel that like i never made her proud i mm. don't feel like i ever made her proud at any point mm. so ever. she was she was your coach so it was so Clearly now you're in the national team. Oh, yes, at, at that point. point. At that like, point, sorry. When, when we keep you... skipping past. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but it's, this is great. Like, okay. when did you get that? How, how does it happen? You get a phone okay. call, was it, was it okay, a letter? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're going back. So after, you know, we're in grade eight, we're, and uh, we go to this gym that is 50 minutes away, yeah. and we try out, because you have to try out yeah. at her gym. And, well, you have to try it at every gym, but for this program, you have to try out to see if you can even make the program. Mm. And at this point, my father is kind of transitioning to kind of take over because of the drive and all that jazz. My Now, at this age, my father is kind of the one that's helping me more on the mental side, too, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I need that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. So my father goes in and, you know, they all speak to this young lady and we do my uh, tryout and she's like, <laughs> she's like, she's weak. I don't know. I don't know if she can do it. I don't know. And sorry, my accents are really bad, but I will try. <laughs> I'll try my best. Um, I don't know if she can do it. She's weak. I don't, I just, I don't know. But like, if, if you want, she can try, she can stay. What's going to have to happen is she's going to take a year off and she's just going to condition. She's going to condition every single day for this next year. And if she gets stronger and if she makes the, the skills that I think she needs to get, she can try national team. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like it was th that blunt. Wow. It was that like, there was no sugar coating anything. Yeah. And my father, he was, um, a pretty good level soccer coach. So for okay. him conditioning, that's his number one. If you're not strong, you're not going to make anything. Mm. So when he heard that, he was like, absolutely. He's like, of course, if you need two years off, <laughs> let her take that. She needs to be strong because another thing in gymnastics is if you're not strong, mm -hmm. you will get injured. Yeah. So the fact that she was able to catch that and see that right away, beautiful because we, we don't want to get injured. We mm -hmm. need that strength there. And if we're going into the national level, that's what's important. So my parents agreed to that. Of course, I don't have any choice or say, so I was told what was happening. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, here we go. Now we're starting six hours a day and um, <laughs> we're going to transi transition into this new phase of life. And um, so my year of just conditioning started. <laughs> what, what is that? What does that entail? Conditioning. Is this like oh my gosh. gym work or is this, you know, like, what is it? Yes. Yeah, so this is like leg lifts so hanging on a bar legs you know bringing your legs to the bar okay. like chin-ups rope climbs cast to handstands box jumps anything that can work your body in a way that can help mold you for gymnastics um that's what i was doing every single day you know hours mm. a day and a lot of basic stuff too so not many skills not doing many flips and stuff like this just mostly conditioning stuff and basics if we can say that okay yeah. At that point, do you have to do you have to change your diet at that point as well? Because I know a lot of for a lot of a lot of um a lot of people when you're mm. you're, you're 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 trying to you're trying to bulk up or anything in the right, gym, like right, they say right. it's it's not just about what you do in the gym, it's about Absolutely. how you're what you're putting in your body. Absolutely. So was that a part of it too at that point? Um not necessarily. Um growing up I just, you know, we were just very blessed. Our family were just we lived a very active lifestyle. Um we didn't have a choice. You know, mom is very big into sports and competitive sports. There's no such thing as, you know, recreational sports. That's not in our okay. families. You know, my brother played soccer. He did professional hockey. My sister, you know, she did the gymnastics, you know, every like we all did something on a very intense level. So growing up in the house, you never had white bread. OK, we never had the whole you know, we never had we only had whole wheat bread, you know, Whenever we'd go to our friend's house, if we had a friend, the first thing we would do is, hey, can we go to your uh, cabinet and see what, what kind of food and snacks you have? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we would do is go there and eat like fruit roll-ups and gushers and, you know, what's the bad cereals? Well, like Cocoa Pops. And yeah, stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. So we'd go over to their house and just eat because in our house, we didn't get the luxury of good sugar. snacks. You get lux <laughs> the luxury of sugar. Right. So <laughs> eating, like that was just already 
implemented in us. Yeah. Um, I was very blessed to just have, you know, a pretty good body. I was slim. I was slender. You know, muscle shape was pretty good just mm. naturally because I just naturally had that. So, yeah. no, that was okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, so what happened then? The, the national team, like, do you, yes. like, was it phone call? Was it? Do oh, we're still coach? there. Like, I'm so sorry. Okay, so after the year of doing just the conditioning, um, it was time to start getting some skills. So that summer, or you know, you know, right before that competitive season started, it was time to start applying the conditioning into the skills, into these new skills, these national level skills. Um, and it really, like, all of that conditioning really worked in my favor because most athletes would learn, on average, you know, maybe two, three skills a summer or a year or something mm. like that. Like, that's just, like, really great if you can get that. I was an anomaly. Like I said, I was just blessed with talent. I, in that one year, I learned, like, 56 skills. Like, that's just, like, that's unheard of. <laughs> like So, like, a skill would be, for example, what? So a skill would be like a round off back handspring double twist. I have no Sorry. Idea so is. like when you go upside down and you you spin two times. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. You go upside down and you flip two times, in in a in a tuck position. You round off back handspring and you flip two times in the air and you land on the floor. That's intense. So I, something I, like that. That's like one skill. I feel like you're talking a different language right I now. I know, but, I'm but, sorry. But, but it's cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll yes. do some YouTube and later. Okay, okay, yeah. So that one, after that year, I learned 56 skills. So, I mean, like, I was ready to start putting routines together and start putting these skills together mm. to compete at the junior national level. Okay. Of course, Yelena was like, we try. Like, I don't know how she's going to do. Like, we try. She's like, there, we're at the competition because now it's time to compete the first time. And most people that's in the national level, like, they start at, like, novice. And they spend a few years in the novice level, which yeah. is younger than junior. Then you go junior, and you're for good. You go. I was too old because now I'm 13, you know, gone through puberty already. So, like, I have to jump straight to the, the junior level. So, already to her, she's like, you know, she didn't even get the... Mm -hmm. We don't that, know that, how, that like, right. yeah. we don't know how she's gonna do. Like, like we just we're putting it out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I did all right. Like the first two, three competitions, like people were like, "Who's that?" Because I was just I've never been known. They're like, "Who is this new black girl?" Type of a thing. Um, and then by the end of that season, out of nowhere again, um, you know, I became I came third in the country. So that was just like my first like, oh, like Brittany Habib, Brittany Habib, like. Who is this like junior national third in the country like first of all we didn't even know she would make it to nationals because you have to make it to the nationals you can compete the national level okay but then you have to qualify to make it to like the nationals where you're like compete does this make sense it's starting I don't to know. it's starting to are you sure so, so i'm sorry to break it down so okay. <laughs> so anyone's able at that level to compete in national competitions yes you yes but to get onto the team or something like this yes okay I think um, it's more like in order to get, I forget, it's been a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's, you had to be like top 32 or something okay. to make it to the nationals, to the national championships or something like that. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. And then when you do that, wherever the national, at that year it was in Saskatchewan. So then we flew to Saskatoon to do the national championships. And Saskatoon it, is in Canada. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And so at that competition... That was where it was the first, like, Brittany Habib, like, who's this third? Like, no, like, nobody th even knew of me at this point until mm. I was standing on the podium, like, who's this girl? So that was kind of my first, maybe, okay, like, let's look, let's, maybe this is someone to look out for, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, because I entered the Nationals at such a late time, I couldn't go junior again, which would have been amazing to keep building that, yeah. you know. So right after that, I had to go senior which is a very big challenge because now all the veterans are there, you know, the ones that compete in the Olympics and the world. And for me, everything was just happening at such a fast rate. And for someone who didn't believe I should be there, like, mm. it's like, man, like, can I go junior again and try to like win it? Can I feel confident in where I am? Can I try to build where I am and make a name for myself? Uh -huh. Because this just all happened. Like my first competition, I didn't place at all. Like the first time, that first junior competition, yeah. I was nothing. The second one, you know, it wasn't like I had a name out there until that national championships when all of a sudden I'm on the podium. I was like, okay, maybe there was that thought that 
maybe I have something. Maybe I can be yeah. good. Let is, me is like it, build it, on this. Was it only at that point where you thought you thought maybe I can do something? Of course. <laughs> Even though you you came third in the national championship. Yeah, like after I came third, it was amazing, and it would have been great to build from there. But then right after that, I had to go into the senior division, and in the senior division again, now I'm with the best of the best. Mm. So it's like, what am I even doing here? I'm not good enough to be with people that have competed. Like all the Olympians are there, the world champions are like for Canada are there. For me, it was just like this little girl. I mean, not that little, but. It was just, I didn't feel like I was where I should be. Yeah. I, I felt like I needed some more time to just build myself and build my name and not just get thrown into the, the best of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you got there. I mean, you know, with my coach and <laughs> every day just pushing, I got there. By the end of my first year, so senior nationals, so the next year later, um, I came 10th, which was like huge for me, like top 10 in Canada. Again, that was That's another incredible. like, wow, like Brittany Habib again, like yeah. top 10. And like, that was huge because of course, like she didn't expect that. Of course I didn't expect that. And I'm like, wow, like top 10. And I feel like, I feel like this was 2004. And what had happened was 2004 is where you're trying to get ready for the Olympics. So at this point it was mm. like, whoa, like top 10, like, maybe like the Olympics is something that I can do. And I do remember um, top 10 got the ability to try out for the Olympics. Okay. So I was top 10 and that means that I was allowed to go try out for the Olympics this year. And I, you know, right after nationals, there was going to be like a mini competition slash mini training camp for the top 10 athletes. Uh -huh. So my father, my mother, everyone's like, oh my goodness, like who knew Britney could get top 10? Like, this is ridiculous. Like she's making it, we're doing it. You know, the team's going. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they announced the top 10 people and they say that Britney Habib is not allowed to try out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what, why? Because there was a tie for 10th and they just said that we're gonna take the 10, and even though Britney tied for 10th, she's just not allowed to try out. We're just not going to let her do wow. it. So now here's the thing. The question you're probably going to ask is like, how is that possible? If the rules say top 10, you know, why didn't they choose you? Um, <laughs> are we getting real here? Let's, 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 <laughs> let's, let's, let's do it. Um, I don't know. There's a few reasons, you know, I think they probably could have said again, like we just, one of it was, we, we didn't expect her to be that good that yeah. fast. Okay. She came out of nowhere. So that's one big reason. We just yeah. don't like, she needs yeah, more we time. She, like, we don't know who could she be, is. It could be lucky. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like they just, they just didn't even want to work with that, which in my opinion is silly. Cause when there's a newbie coming up, you want to be like, Whoa, like let's work with that. Let's, mm -hmm. let's harness that. Yeah. Let's bring her into these training camps and see what she can do yeah, because you definitely. want new, you want you, new you know bones. Everyone, you know what everyone else is capable of. Exactly. Right? And then you see this one person in one year shooting up the scale like that. Mm -hmm. Like you would want to be like, let's yeah, even bring her yeah. in. And like, let's work with her at like, at some point, I feel like that's what the mentality should have been. Yeah. But again, there's a lot of politics and gymnastics, you know, the people there's politics everywhere. So, you know, who you want the top 10 to be. Okay. I was not in their top 10. Okay. And the fact that I pushed myself in, it was like, we weren't expecting that there was no way we didn't even think she'd be top 20. Mm. So the fact that she came in at 10th, let's try to find some excuses. So one was, we didn't expect her to be good that fast Two. Um, she hasn't done enough international things, which, you know, I do agree with this one. Three. Had you done any at that point? I don't think I had done anything international at this point yet. Okay. Because at this point, I was just still a, a nobody. Yeah. You know, at this point. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You know, my parents believe that there was something else there, you know, why mm -hmm. I perhaps, I don't know what to That's say. Because, <laughs> I, 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 can, I can say it. Oh, I can okay. say it. It's a little, little word beginning with R, maybe. Let's say this again. A little word beginning with R. Yeah, like I think that that could have been. I know nobody would believe this, that, you know, that, I don't know. Do we talk about it? You can say whatever you want to say. I don't know. You can say anything you want to say. I know that. 
<laughs> I mean, it's it's not. I mean, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. No, I know. Not trying to get no. in trouble at all. Right, right. Okay. Well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> it's it's cool. It's cool. okay. <laughs> It's cool, yeah. it's cool. So what what happens after that? So what happens after that is my parents are pissed the freak off. Yeah. They're talking with the head coach of Canada like, how can you have a rule like in black and white and then make your own rules after and say this is not possible? Like talking to the whole Olympic committee and Canadian committee and all these meetings are happening. Yeah. Like how can you do that? Like this girl works so hard and mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. course nobody had any fight for it. And I think what was really hard for me was my coach didn't have my back like she wasn't like yeah like we worked hard it wasn't she didn't have that with me and that was something that kind of broke me too that she was just sitting there like well they're right she you have it like you aren't like she was just it seemed like in in the middle and she wasn't like what like let, let's prove what we can do yeah. and if they were smart politically because everything is a political thing they should have mm-hmm. just been like let her try out it yeah. was just a camp it wasn't saying i was going to make the team we knew i wasn't going to make the team yeah but have me there because it's just a camp it was just a try it was just a competition let me see what it's like to be there who knows like there's always people getting injured you always want to keep yeah, you know your course. best of the best around yeah and politically i feel like they should have just said even though they didn't expect me sure just come on in top 10 makes it let's just see what this is like and yeah. just have me there but they chose not to they were just so strong on they want to do things their way. And my coach was just not even like on my, t- on my side. Cause she's just, you know, she's not good enough yet. Like, and that's her mentality. Like, let's just wait until she's better because I was just never good enough. Mm. So that was really challenging. That was really, really challenging for me, but we kept it going, <laughs> went back to the gym yeah. and we just kept training and just kept trying to rebuild and build and build and, I think by the next year, I, you know, I probably came like sixth in Canada. So now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm starting to meddle on certain things. I'm starting to, you know, get onto the podium for in, individual events like floor and vault and make event finals for beam. And well, what was your strongest event? I was pretty good all around. Like, okay. and that was good. Like hey, I keep saying hey, like, hey. no, because I keep <laughs> saying like slow and steady wins the race. Like my consistency was good. I might not have had the most amazing tricks on every event, but I had enough to keep me in the running. I had enough to be like, okay, like sometimes she come first or second on the floor, but her bars might not be that strong, but it's still enough to keep her on. Like there was no falls. Like I could just keep things moving. I can keep things consistent to keep me in the running. Whereas there might be someone that could be amazing at bars, but but that's all they can do. Isn't great. Yeah. Right. Or they go on the beam and they fall six times. Like I was just pretty good all around her, which kept me in the runnings. And on top of that, I was good enough to make event finals on certain events. Okay. So, As we kept going, there was, um, at this point, a really amazing head coach of Canada, a Russian guy. His name is Andre. Like, he's just, I love him because he believes so much in me. (laughs) Um, And he just, you know, he saw something in me and just really tried to pull this out at one of the training camps Mm -hmm. and um, taught me this new skill, this crazy new trick. It was called the full-in so you go round up back handspring, you do a full twist in the air, and then you flip two times backwards. So like a crazy cool skill that like you don't learn in one day. Mm. I did that. One day he just saw potential in me and he's like, okay, like let's do this. And like I just did it. And it was just crazy. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like this is amazing. And so I think that he just saw some really cool potential in me. And yeah. he saw that on some events I was a little bit stronger. Mm-hmm. So what he decided to do, I think, this next year, maybe 2005, was to use me um, in an international competition. I think it was called the American Cup. Okay. And to use me on vault and to use me on the floor exercise. So they were going to use me for two events. And there was a group, a team of maybe five Canadian females. Mm -hmm. And everyone came, either you're doing all around, if you're doing one or two events. Okay. He said he would like to use me for like vault and floor. So obviously this is like huge and big that like I'm on my first team event and representing my country at like a big competition like this. Um, I think that was my first like, wow, like this is so cool. What did that feel like to, because I guess you must have had like the tracksuit. Oh yeah, I did. And like the the, 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 the pass. Oh, I had everything. (laughs) That's so cool. How did that feel? Um, 
I just know like getting the t-shirts and getting the leotards with the Canadian maple leaf on yeah. it and you know being at that training camp and being up with the veterans because at this point I was with the Olympians I was with mm. the girls who have who had competed for the world championships and as intimidating as that was I was on the team with them and it was like super nerve-wracking for me and every time i'd look at my coach i just look at her and i'd feel like man i know she doesn't think i should be here and i that's my head i know that's me mentally yeah. too that's always thinking that too but every time i'd look at her i'd feel like man i know she doesn't think i'm good enough to be here but i'd look at them and i'm like i'm here and look at my leotard i'm like yo i got the <laughs> the, le the maple leaf on me like this is your, so cool your parents <laughs> must have been crazy proud though oh they were like ecstatic they were so excited like my father my mother my my brother and my sister they're extremely supportive of me like yeah. they loved it and absolutely like i'm very very blessed to have such a beautiful family that believed that believed in me and believed in me so much more than i believed in mm. myself because again for me i was like i don't know i'm just i'm just doing it i'm just doing a thing yeah <laughs> you know do, do you would you attribute your your success to your family um absolutely and that is support that environment absolutely that you grew like a hundred percent a hundred percent um they were very intricate in me being where i needed to be mm. but i also have to say that the above the orishas like the spirits around me did they were huge too because without them like i was just i was just really naturally blessed to be a vessel that could do all the things that allowed me to do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so where was the, how many medals have you actually won? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I really, not to be in a cocky way, but like. Yeah, yeah. Because some people will like keep count oh and gosh, have them no. like framed. Absolutely on the, not. Really? No way. And plus there's a certain point where you go to international competitions and you don't get a medal. You'll get like a plaque or you'll get a trophy or you get yeah. like a watch. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Give you a watch. I don't know. I feel like I've gotten a watch from a competition. I feel like I was in Slovenia. Yeah, I was in Slovenia and I got a watch. <laughs> so, so you have no idea how many, how many, like trophies or what was the mm -hmm. highest you came, like highest you placed in Canada, like at your at your peak. At my peak, I feel like the highest I placed all around was maybe fourth or fifth all around. So um, at one point, you were the fourth or fifth best in gymnast in, in, in the country. Yeah, on for the all around, and within that, like on individual events, like I. I know that I've come, like I've meddled on individual events as well in the country, but I, I really don't remember like s specifics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like, so you tra you've, you've traveled, it sounds like you traveled everywhere, Brazil, Slovenia. Yeah. I mean, not everywhere. I feel like I've been to maybe like nine countries okay. at that, in that span of five years, I feel like maybe I traveled to about nine countries or so. So not everywhere, but just enough for at that age that was like pretty cool yeah. to be traveling that at, much. At that age, how old are you? Like that 16, 17? When I started traveling, I believe I was 15. 15. So I think it was like 15 to 17 where I, it's 15, to, those two years where I traveled to nine countries. So within that span, it wow. was like pretty cool to be traveling that much and that often. And sometimes even by myself, which mm. was terrifying, but something that was just done and again i didn't have my voice so it was like okay you're going to this competition bye you know my coach didn't even come with me so again that was something that wow. hurt my heart too again that like i'm a national senior high performance athlete like i'm the highest level in this gym right now yeah. why are you staying back for the novices because there was like some new novices coming up yeah so again that was something for me that i was like dang like you really don't like me <laughs> like i'm the best level in this gym right now i am or, your or did you ever think of it as like you're at that level so you can look up like they trust you to look after yourself you know you can say that you can say that but was there any other national high performance athlete traveling without their coach i i, I don't know i don't know how it there works. was not okay 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 <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> the mic. yes exactly <laughs> there was not like there absolutely was not like i appreciate the fact that there was another athlete from Canada at that mm -hmm. competition where okay. she arranged to say, Hey, I have an athlete coming. Can you please help her out and like move her board or cause there's different board settings and bar settings okay. that you need a coach there to like move your board or to help you move the bars. So the you have to do all that by yourself. She arranged that a, a coach from Canada that was down there with his athlete would help okay. me out okay. while I was there by myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. That's so. not cool. I didn't think so. Like that was very hard for me. That was very hurtful for me. And again, mm. with my, you know, lack of confidence, that just didn't help with. Yeah. You know that it w- it wasn't a good feeling for me. But you went to the Commonwealth Games. I did. What happened there? It was a cool experience. Again, first of all, getting all that gear was amazing. <laughs> I got like a hockey bag full of Commonwealth Games stuff that said Canada everywhere. So every day I was just rocking new gear. And it was really cool because um, take this with a grain of salt. Like most gymnasts are socially awkward. You know, you're not really around people. You know, you, you're not in school often. So you don't yeah, really know I mean, how to. I mean, like you, like you said, you've, you, you weren't in school much. Absolutely. So being at the Commonwealth Games and my my background's Jamaican, so I'm so, like, you know, proud to be Jamaican. Maybe I wasn't that proud back then, but like when I saw Jamaica at the Commonwealth Games, I'm like, yo, that's so <laughs> cool. And you're like on this athlete place where there's like guys everywhere. And that's a big thing to be around guys because, you know, you're not around that very often as a gymnast. So you mm. like you see like guys around like good looking. Then they're all rocking their different uh, country uniforms. And you're just like, yo, like this is so cool. You got the accreditation on uh-huh. you. There's um, places where you can eat and to be quite frank at the commonwealth games this one was in australia okay the best food i've had in a very (laughs) long time and i love food like my hobby my pastime there's always food around me there's food in my purse there's there's i carry food with me because i love food and i just remember the commonwealth games the food that they had there was just phenomenal so i was just so happy that i was like time to eat let's go <laughs> like let's just let's get things going it's time to eat <laughs> that was really cool <laughs> she that that whole story is is incredible like i think um for a lot of people out there um they they try in different in different areas of of life whether it's like um like maybe business or or um i don't know writing or anything you're trying to get to that level that you were at you know what i mean so it's it's how does it feel now that you're you're not I mean, mm. you're still involved in gymnastics, yes, but you're not yes, like yes, looking yes. back on everything. Yes, like, yes. like, how does it, does it feel like it was almost like another life? Um, that transition was very, 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 very hard for me. Um, because at such a young age, I had achieved so much in my life. Like 16 years old, being at the highest level that you could possibly mm. be. Like, yeah. you've become the best of the best at 16 years old. Like, where do you go from there? <laughs> You know, like a lot of people, you know, train their life or, you know, work their whole life to get that CEO position and to get to that high place, to get on that big performance, to do all these big things. And they call it women's gymnastics when it's really young girl gymnastics. Like you're Mm -hmm. not a woman. You're definitely not a woman. Half the girls haven't gone through puberty. Like like I remember watching the Olympics and stuff and and realizing that, you know, everyone there, I, I can't remember hearing about some, like someone who's 25. Mm, yeah, you know, it's rare. In, I, think, I think, I feel like, I could be wrong, but I feel no. like maybe men, um, maybe because I see a lot of the, the stuff that men do is, is much more, you can't be 15 years old. Right. Or I think it'd, it'd be rare to get 15 right. year old doing what, because you have to Absolutely. be physically, you have to be in pretty, pretty Absolutely. amazing shape. You got it. I mean, it is men's gymnastics because, you know, once you're 20, 25 or so that's when you're really getting the right muscles yeah. and the, you know to get yourself to where you need to be yeah. it is men's gymnastics but for girls mm. it's easier to be doing gymnastics when you're smaller younger you know you have no breasts you haven't gone through puberty mm-hmm. it you know that is a challenge it, it's a really big challenge i mean nowadays things are a little bit different mm-hmm. you know i know there's that one gymnast I think she's from Germany. I think she's like 40 years old or so, and she's still doing oh, ridiculously really? awesome. She has a son that's like 10 years old. Really? Her name is Oksana. I do not know how to pronounce her last name, but okay. she's just phenomenal. Um, I mean, she's an anomaly, but yeah. there are some female gymnasts that are a little bit older nowadays, okay. but it's rare, quite frankly, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. You broke your finger, though. You have to go back to that story. Oh, man, we're going all over the place. That story, yeah, (laughs) just real quick. What happened? You broke your finger. Okay, okay, okay. So, again, me and my relationship with my coach, you know, we had just gotten off this long, long, long plane ride. Like, we traveled to Brazil. I am tired. But the first thing that we do is we walk over and we go to the gym. And, you know, all the other 
coaches and gymnasts, they're just, you know, doing a little bit of conditioning and stretching. But my coach is like, you know, or actually they probably weren't even doing so much, but I had to do a little bit of conditioning. I had to do a little bit of stretching. And then of course I'm stubborn, like, man, like why do I have to do this? Like everyone else gets to chill for a second. And of course I have to go into the leotard and do all this extra work. I always have to put in all this extra work. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my goodness. So we're doing different things and I get through the training and it's pretty, it's pretty good. And I'm like, I'm ready to end now because I'm like, yo, I'm done. I'm good. I did what I needed to do. And then she's like, I need you to run on the vault. I need you to do some more sprints on the vault. Like get your legs going because the plane ride was so long. Yeah. So I'm stubborn and I'm like, oh man, like fine. So I go and I start sprinting down the vault. Okay. So the boards in Brazil are a little bit different than the boards in Canada. I, if I can try to describe this properly. Underneath the board, there's a slight little hole. I don't know how to describe this without... Anyway, so I'm running Got down on. the vault. There's a Yurchenko mat. I know you guys probably don't know what Yurchenko no, just, mat you is. Use the, go, go for it. Go, I'm just running say, down just the horse. I trip on the Yurchenko mat. I fly into the beat board. My hands go underneath the board. My pinky finger gets stuck on the outside of the board, and I keep going with force, and the pinky finger just goes right back. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, that hurts like F. Like, that is, this is like this is not good and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm mm. scared. Like this is hurting me so much. And then like I go over and I try to show it to her like with no tears. Like I think I hurt myself. And she's like, oh, Britney, what did you do? Like, and she's like <laughs> looking at it because this is like purple. This is black and blue. This thing is like swollen instantly. Like it's sticking wow. out the other way. It is just not good. And we're like, shoot. So we try to get like the trainers to come over to like look at it to see what's going on. Mm. And like, it doesn't look very good. And then, um, I don't know, the uh, gymnastics Canadian committee that comes over and they're all looking at my finger like, oh boy, like, what's this? What's going to happen? What's happening? What can we do? Are you going to be able to compete tomorrow? You're here to, to represent Canada. Yeah. X, Y, Z. What's your decision? Like putting all this pressure on me right away. And I'm like, God darn, like, First of all, I don't know what you're asking me right now. My finger is hurting like F. Like, yeah. this is swollen. I'm hurting. And you're asking me if I'm going to be able to compete. And then I remember one person on the committee saying, so either you compete or we're sending you home. So, like, you need to figure out what you're going to be able to do. Are you going to be able to compete in two days or not? Because if not, we're sending you home. Wow. Plain and simple. And a lot of people don't know about this side of the story, like, because I haven't really shared this before on some of the inside things that I had to go through by myself when I was traveling with my coach. Um, and the reason why I'm saying it like this is because there was somebody else that was there that was injured that did not get threatened like this. Mm. So for me, again, like I was like, dang, like why are they treating me like this? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to be the one that's always stepping up? There's someone here that can't do anything. And why aren't you threatening to bring her home? And of course I didn't have a voice back then, but I was like, dang, like, and then this is when maybe it started to make me think like, is it, is it because of the color of my skin? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like there's a lot of little things that, that keep happening to me and solely to me that I have to deal with on my own and just shut up and be like, okay, I want to be here. I want to be on the national team and I, I want to represent my country. So let me just shut up because if I say anything, I'm the one that's going to get sent home. Yeah. Even though there's someone else here that's not doing anything, but she's not getting threatened, threatened to go home. Needless to say, of course, with my mouth, I was, you know, I didn't say anything. I just said, I will be able to compete. Let me get some ice. Let me do what I need to do. Um, so the next day, my broken, poor, black and blue, thick finger sticking out to the side, um, I, do, I do the competition. I do fairly well, like consistency. I didn't fall. Like I did what I needed to do. I helped the team get to where they needed to be. Um, and I, I did the competition, which was really great, but it was just like what I had to go through and put myself through and just really try to breathe through to just make sure I could stay where I was. And I didn't want to cause problems because deep down, I wasn't sure if I should even really be here. Again, that mm. confidence thing was always battling me. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't think I should be here, I don't want to cause problems. So if I don't want to cause problems, I have to keep quiet and just mm. do what I know I can do. And I can do some gymnastics. So let me just do that. Let me do it consistently. It's not going to be that good, 
but I can at least put up some numbers to make Canada look okay. And yeah. that was it. And that was just what my goal was to keep quiet and do what I should do, even though I have a broken finger and there's someone else that's not going to be competing. <laughs> wow. There we go. Brazil, my poor finger. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But do you, um, do you, is that part of what you do now? Like, not somewhat like obviously you're a, you're a gymnastic teacher now mm -hmm. but do you how much do you try and give the girls that you teach because you, you you teach young 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 women now right yeah definitely how much um, do you try and give them that that instill them that confidence that maybe you didn't have at that absolutely. age absolutely um it's one of the biggest things i do when i coach and to be frank with you nate um i actually started my own program that's called girl powered and um it is meant to be specific specifically for girls who identify as black who are black or mm -hmm. who are black um because it's different being black i can i can just put it out there it's different yeah. being black it's different being black and being an athlete it's different being black and being anything and i can attest to being a black athlete you know on the canadian national gymnastics team at the time that i was there you know, it was challenging and it was difficult. You know, I have naturally big, curly, frizzy hair. Like I've got big hair and that's naturally me. And I always had to try to fit in this box, this Caucasian box of mm. straight hair, bun, ponytail. And I'm not saying that I cannot do that. I just didn't know it was an option for me to do that with my big curly mm. hair because I didn't want to. I didn't want to disrupt anything because yeah. I just wanted to keep my mouth quiet and just stay there. You know, I had a very different body type. I have big breasts and, you know, I ha I'm tall. I was always at the end of the line because I was the tallest gymnast there and these long slender legs. And, you know, I have people questioning like, you know, how do you do gymnastics? And they don't want to say it even though they're looking at my chest. Like, how do you do, how do you do gymnastics? You know, which quite frankly is sexual abuse staring at my breasts like this <laughs> but not yeah. seeing it um like how do you flip like that and if you do flip and you fall on your you know and you fall they don't want to say fall on your chest like does that hurt how do you do those but things th these are women saying these things to you women and men okay as well because i mean frankly they probably also just wanted to know like most gymnasts don't have breasts yeah you are developed you have breasts you've clearly gone through puberty and nobody else has not <laughs> yeah you know so it is it's it's a big it's a big difference and you know my whole life you know i just didn't really embrace that i didn't mm. stand up for it i didn't know what to do because i just didn't really have that voice so but, i mean you're still young at that age i mean you're 16 17 years old like you're I still am. trying to figure so much out so much out and i think that's why i'm so strong on this girl power program because these young beautiful black girls like they're special they're so special and black girls are built differently black girls you know are a little bit thicker you know they've got thick thighs or big bums and tend to go through puberty a little bit sooner and our hair is never straight it's never going to be straight like it's meant to be big and curly and frizzy and if you have dreadlocks that's gorgeous and you need to love that mm -hmm. and you can do gymnastics like this you can dance like this um and there's not many and this again is just my perspective there's not many black coaches out there that can understand that, mm -hmm. um, that can understand how to, how to mold that, not to look at your body and be like, too chubby, too big, mm -hmm. too, too tall. No, hair, hair not good. Like, and I'm saying it like this because it has happened before. Mm -hmm. My sister has tried out to be in a, you know, a certain level in gymnastics and she was a chubbier young girl. Yeah. And simply because of her body, they said not even a chance and mm. to us like that so it baffles me so much because you can have someone that works so hard every single day and surpass someone like me who had the natural talent who doesn't try as hard as that person that's going to yeah. work so hard because if you have a goal in your mind and you love something and you work every single day your weight's going to go down and if you have a coach that understands your body there's yeah. a different technique and how to train someone to do it that mm -hmm. way and a lot of coaches, especially ones that are so one dimensional, this is how you do it. This is how you train it. This is the technique for it. And this is the only way that I know how to yeah. coach it. Um, w when you have somebody that has a different body size or a body style, like yeah. there's a different way to train that person. And are you willing to open your mind to make it easier for them, even though it's more challenging for you to teach, 
can we make them feel comfortable and beautiful at the same time and not mm. judge them because they have big breasts mm. because they've got a little bit of a belly sticking out like mm-hmm. this is life yeah. there are so many different shapes and sizes in this world and at what point are we going to fully embrace that and say that's cool i can work with that mm. i haven't found many people like that so my sister and i have this huge vision of just bringing out this team of like young beautiful black girls and you know even if it's not to the olympics because i know nowadays people are listening to this like what is she talking about simone biles gabby douglas like she's ridiculous get the f out of (laughs) here you know i'm talking about my perspective here and what i've seen here you know in toronto in canada i haven't seen a program for young black girls where they can love themselves you know biracial girls you know with caucasian mothers that don't know how to do their hair so every time their beautiful curly hair grows mommy shaves their head bald like how how is that girl gonna grow up where's her identity where's Mm -hmm. her self-love when every time she sees a curl you know it's either shaved off or is gone to get it pin straightened because mommy doesn't really know how to do her hair properly like this is bigger than just gymnastics gymnastics. and i think that that was something that i needed when i was doing gymnastics that it's bigger than just gymnastics like i'm i'm setting a trend you know i'm out there i'm on a podium like i can be making a change or making a difference for people and if i had that confidence and understood that this is bigger than me just being a vessel Mm -hmm. i really feel like i could have made a much bigger impact and to be frank with you that phase of my life, I know you, you wanted to talk about gymnastics. Don't like to talk about it because I actually regret a little bit that phase of my life because I feel like I lived all those years without a voice. I lived all those years just being a zombie. Mm-hmm. I was never aware. I was never there. Yes, I've been to Brazil, but have I been to Brazil? You know what I'm like? Yeah. Does this make sense? Like, yeah. yeah, I've been to Russia, but have I been to Russia? Was my soul there? It was not, it doesn't matter. It, like I was just never present. And because I was never present, my skills were never present. My routines were never present. I was just never my best self. Mm. And for me, it's like, what is the point of living life and not being your best self? Mm. Like you're cheating, you're, yeah. you're walking around a liar. And I know that's harsh to say about myself, but that's how I feel. Like I. I'm, I'm embarrassed about my national years on the team and I don't like to talk about it. And that's why I was so apprehensive. Like, can we talk about something else? Like <laughs> I've done other things. Like I'm a better person now. Like I just had a lot of growing to do. I had a lot of self doubts, you know, lack of self love. Like I didn't have someone telling me black is beautiful. Mm. Your skin tone is gorgeous. That caramel color skin is is different you don't see shades like this often and it doesn't matter if everyone around you has got you know tan or yellow skin your caramel skin is gorgeous Mm. and when you wash your hair and it gets curly like that's gorgeous how about you try a competition where you slick it back but you got the curls in the back like i didn't have that self-love and when you don't have self-love nate you don't have anything you don't you don't Mm. and it's it's so passionate for me because I lived so many light like so many years of my life not knowing who I was, not knowing that I was black, not knowing that there was culture in Jamaica, like not knowing there was so much that I just didn't know that now I've got so much to share. My passion is so strong. Like I love coaching because I have all this knowledge. Yes, I didn't have a good relationship with that Russian coach, but my knowledge of gymnastics because of those five years, Mm -hmm. six hours a day, I understand the depth of every skill. I know exactly what she's looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, now I incorporate, you know, the love, the self-love and that for me, love is important. I think that's, you know, a very big language for me is um, through relationships, showing love Mm -hmm. as well. Um, So showing that love and and building that relationship with young girls Mm. um, and knowing and having them know that gymnastics is not life. Mm -hmm. And this might seem weird because there's a lot of coaches that are like, gymnastics is life. This is your way of living. Like 
one all be all this is your phase right now i don't i talked to the girls i had coaching today and i said what's new i haven't seen you in a while yeah. like what's going on and they're trying to think of something new in gymnastics and i said excuse me like you should know me better when i ask you what's up what's new i don't even care about gymnastics is there a new boy that you're talking to how is school how is this how is that yeah because gymnastics is just a phase right now this is building who you are as a person can you communicate with me? Can you talk to me and look in my eyes and speak with confidence? Can yeah. you smile with me? What's new? And then they got to think, okay, well, actually, I tried a new ice cream flavor. Like, that's something new. Yeah. And that's okay. And again, like, there's so many gymnasts that just don't know how to communicate because they're so rigid. Like, do it this way. Okay. Like, you have to be kind of robotic. Mm. And my way of coaching is, if you're going to be a robot, I absolutely cannot coach you. Like, it's not going to work. Yes, there has to be respect. And that's a big thing for me. Respect is huge because mm -hmm. nowadays kids have no respect. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and I can't stand for that. So most gymnasts just call their coaches by their first name. My name is Miss Brittany. And if you don't call me Miss Brittany, like you can walk back, think about what you need to do and say, good morning, Miss Brittany. You don't come in and say hi or hi, Brittany. No, there's respect. Yeah. Because again, it's bigger than gymnastics. You need to know how to communicate and how to respect your elders. So some of the principles that I kind of include in my coaching styles. <laughs> so essentially, it sounds like what you're saying is for you, gymnastics is you, you're you using, you're teaching young girls about life through gymnastics. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, and they have to understand that it's bigger than them. And this mm. is just a phase in their life that's going to help mold them to be the people that they're going to be in the future. Yeah. And there's so many amazing skills that you can learn from gymnastics. And I'm talking about determination, persistence, visualization. Interesting thing with, with those things. So like when I was writing my book, I was because with music, obviously people always talk about, you know, if you're playing in bands and stuff, it's, it's good to, it's good because you interact with people and, you know, yes. it helps your confidence when you're performing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But do you think it's really important that, that the girls are aware of that? Because sometimes you go through you go through you know learning an instrument or or gymnastics or, mm -hmm. or football or or, right. or or school and those skills those like soft skills aren't you're never told you know this is not necessary to say like all right now your conference is getting i can see your conference getting better <laughs> exactly, like you yeah. know you're not a pokemon you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes, yes, but yes. but to for them to be like aware that this is you know by doing this you know these are the skills that we're trying to build for you like do you think it's important for them to know that or do you think it's it doesn't matter if they know that or not it's gonna happen eventually no a thousand and it, this we're talking about my opinion mm -hmm. my opinion is a hundred percent it's important for them to know that yeah so for me i will talk to them about a skill and i would relate it to life yeah like when they're like you know what i'm just scared i don't think i can do it i'm done with this skill and i would say okay i hear your perspective now mm -hmm. Say you're going into an interview. You're too scared. You're like, you know what? I just don't want to do it because you're too scared. You go to another interview. You do the exact same thing. You're trying to tell me that you're just never going to have a job because you're too scared to do that interview. Mm -hmm. So I always try to break it down into life scenarios yeah. just to give them a different perspective. And they're like, okay, like I see where you're coming from. Now let's break down why are you scared? Because there's always a reason why there's fear. Yeah. And so it's digging into a little bit deeper as to why that fear is there and how can we work with that? Yeah. And for me, I was a very mental gymnast. I was scared of everything. I'm still scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine my Russian coach like, go do it. Like, what are you doing? Because I had all of this natural ability. So for her to me to be like fear, like what's fear? Like your body is made to do stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Why are you taking three hours? And I kid you not. Why are you taking three hours to get this one skill done when you've got everything you need to do it? Mm -hmm. But I didn't have someone to be like, what are you scared of, Brittany? Yeah. What could happen? Because she, she doesn't see that. She's just like, you can do it. Your body's made for it. And she would just start screaming at me like, well, Brittany, it is Oda, Brittany, Brittany, it is Oda. So like, you know, I know a little bit of Russian because of her. <laughs> okay. And then she would just start crying and she would just start screaming and crying because she just can't get to me. And then when she's crying and screaming and she goes into her office and she just slams the door and she's crying and she's screaming and she just doesn't, she doesn't know how to deal with me. Yeah. Now I'm like, you know, Look how she's dealing with me. Like, and you think that's going to help me? And that was my mentality. Like, you really think that acting like that's going to help yeah. me? Like, 
this is going to just put me another three steps behind. So when practice should have been five hours, I was there for eight hours, like literally, wow. because we just were butting heads because we couldn't understand each other mm. or understand how to get the best out it's, of one it's, another. It sounded like she was, she was trying to get you on this level to do gymnastics. Right. And you're like, you need a bit, it's not just about G the gymnastics. gymnastics for, you. for me, it was so it was, much deeper. It, was, it, was all phys it sounds like it's all physical for her, not mental. Right. Well, for her, yes. 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 But for you, you needed that mental side I to just help you. Because yes. the mental is always going to help the physical. That's right. Mm. And on top of it, what I needed was some love. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like, I know that this is weird, but like, love is so important to me. If Even if she just like played me a little bit, if she knew me, yeah well enough to know my personality to be like okay if i show her something special or i give her a little wink or like i just give her a hug and hold her i would have moved mountains and i yeah. know that that's silly but there was one competition where i felt her there was one competition where i felt realness and she looked at me and she smiled with the realest smile and she winked at me and she said breeds she said you got this nate i killed that beam routine it was the <laughs> everybody in the stadium was like and at the end of that beam routine, she just, her mouth dropped and she's staring at me. She's like, where did that come from? Like, what was that? Yeah. And I knew what it was. It was because she showed me something, a little bit of realness and mm. that idea of like, you were meant to, like, she just made me feel like I was something important. And again, a big part, I keep going back and forth because maybe I should have communicated this with her because she never knew that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever known this, but I just remember that competition. I remember that beam routine. It was like, ridiculous it was like so probably one of my highlights you know it was so yeah. good but i just remember the smile she gave me i remember the wink she gave me i remember how she held my hands mm. with meaning and that love took me to that different level like i just felt like i was worthy mm -hmm. yeah i don't know <laughs> so what what would you say to to um someone who's not a gymnast someone who's mm -hmm. trying to set up their own business or okay. someone who's trying to be a a, 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 a top snooker player I don't, I don't know yeah whatever. no like, what would you say to someone I would say that first of all I would say that I'm wrong for um, relying on someone so much to make me who I am mm. um, you need to know yourself first that's the first thing that I would say know yourself first know your worth know everything about you and when you trust that then you move on to all of those amazing things that you can do. But if you don't know yourself, if you don't trust yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. It doesn't matter how hard you work. If in your gut, you don't believe that you're meant to be there, mm -hmm. you're just, you're never going to be there ever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's the first step because that's something that I've learned deep within me. I shouldn't have relied on her. Yeah. I shouldn't have relied on, where's my love? Where's my high five? Where's the what did it do for me? Yeah. Nothing. I five years on the national team, and what did I get? Regret. <laughs> oh my well, goodness. I mean, you, you did get a lot of stuff, and okay, you did okay. you did represent your country <laughs> okay. all over the world. I'm not saying that's nothing. You know right. what I mean? That's something. I, yes, but it wasn't to the best of my ability. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, yeah. feel like it was like you can look a back waste and think, of time. Like yeah, you I can feel look like back and think there's there was more that you could have that could have come from me. A hundred percent. If I just put it on me instead of look at it looking at others to build me up yeah that's powerful though okay good that's, yeah, yeah i hope that's, so no I'm, no i, I yeah <laughs> i'm really. still learning i'm still learning myself but knowing yourself loving yourself and embracing yourself mm -hmm. embracing yourself is so important like society has this mentality of how people need to look you know if you've got this color skin, you got to act the certain way. Mm -hmm. If you got that color skin, you have to speak a certain way. Yeah. No, embrace you, your silliness, your quirkiness, your boldness, like your crooked teeth. Like love that, embrace that because that's making you, you and nobody can have that better than you. And I feel like once you fully embrace all of that, life is going to be so beautiful. You really, like, whatever you set your heart out to be, mm -hmm. you will find that. You will make it. You, you're going to get there. And the universe will work with you. Mm -hmm. It will work with you if you trust it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. I have a couple, I think one or two things left, okay, and then we're cool. going to wrap it up. <laughs> okay. But um, I just have to ask, because you've talked a couple times about 
um, you spend like six hours in the gym, mm-hmm. seven hours, eight hours sometimes yes. in the gym. Yes. Like what? Because there must have been times where you wanted to give up. Like, oh, like yeah, absolutely. there must have been. All right. Are you kidding like, me? What, <laughs> what stops you from giving up? Yeah. From just walking out of the gym when you're being screamed at, what stopped you from from staying in school when you know you know it's time to leave? Like what what stopped you? My answer, I feel like, is not inspirational, and I know that this is like we want to inspire no, people. No, just be real. My realness is I didn't have a voice. Like mm. I wasn't gonna be like I quit, I walk out. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? First of all, like I wasn't raised to be a quitter, so that was just one thing that I would just never do. And two. I didn't have a voice to even be like, this is how I feel. This is what I'm fe-. like. I just in our house growing up, we didn't get that. We didn't yeah. get the opportunity to be like, mom and dad, can we have a talk? <laughs> this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. I don't quite like gymnastics. I'd like to try dance. I'd like to try arts. I'd like to. Are you kidding me? It was like you do this. What your mom says you do. What your dad says you do. What you we tell you eat you eat. So that was a big thing. I didn't have a voice. So. You know, you just got to keep it moving. And two, I think that perhaps, um, I don't know. I don't know. If I'm thinking of university day, university days, if we can pass by college sure, days, if sure. that's okay. Um, university days, what kept me going was um, there was a sense of accomplishment when I had fear or I had these senses of like, oh my gosh, like I don't think I could do it. Yeah. But when I would do it, I'd be like, I just moved a mountain. I'm so <laughs> amazing. Oh my, like there was that sense of like, yo, I'm amazing right now. Like I didn't think I could do this, but I did it. And it would just make me feel really, really good with myself. I yeah. feel empowered. I'd feel a little bit like Superwoman, like yo, I'm defying gravity right now. This is amazing. People say they can't fly. I just flew, <laughs> like I just flew. And did spins and right? stuff in the like, air this at the same is, time. And not only that, like, and then I caught the bar after I flew. Yeah. Like, so in university, as I started to get a little bit more conscious, there was that sense of accomplishment that I was like, yo, mm. I did that. Like, I worked hard and I got that skill, and I feel really good about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a couple questions for you. Sure, I'll try to I'll all try right. to answer them but fast. Like, I know this is going yeah. <laughs> longer than <laughs> no, no, this is it's, it's cool. So, okay, all right, so okay. don't think about it too much, right? Okay, okay. okay. What what is your favorite word? My favorite word? Yeah. That's a too. I can't, That's too, way too hard. What's your favorite word? I. Can't. Favorite word a. Nate, <laughs> that is too hard for me. I'm so sorry. There's no way. Um. Was there a word that I've said recently a lot in this interview or this podcast? Um, what have you said a lot? Um, voice. Voice? Okay. But that's not... No, I no. don't think so. I don't... Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll pass on that one. Yes. What's your, but what's your least favorite word? Oh my goodness. Can't. I don't like that word. Okay. Don't use it. <laughs> and I, I try not to use it either because it's so negative and I, I don't believe in negativity. Yeah. Um, and I'm really big on your mental, your mental awareness starts everything and it stems everything. And what you think, what you put out into this universe is what's going to manifest. So if mm. you're sitting there saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I do not like this word. If okay. I'm coaching you or you're around me and we're doing a private lesson and you say can't, you will get in trouble. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, what is your favorite sound? My favorite sound? Yeah. So amazing. At first, I think the first thing that came to my mind was nature. Mm. And you might say, like, what in nature? I just, my eyes are closed and I, I'm in a forest. And I, maybe you can say that you cannot hear a forest, but it's the sound of the wind. It's um, water dripping somewhere. It's, for me, sound is also smell. So when I'm there, I, can f- I, I feel like I can feel something when I'm in that nature if that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, I closed my eyes like I was really there. <laughs> it you're, was so tranquil. Right <laughs> so yes, maybe for right now, that's what I'll say. But then then what 
Oh, it's just one. I'm sorry. I'll just leave it. That's it. I'm going what, too what long. Sound? That okay, was it. What's, that was the, it. What's, what's the sound or noise that you hate? Um, I think anything that's just like very loud, like very loud, like metal, hard Okay. Like sound. construction site kind of. Yeah, not really, no. Okay. I feel like I was going to say more something like... No offense to people who like this kind of music, like okay. something that's like punk rock, like just loud, heavy metal. Sometimes it just sounds like arguments to me, like something that's loud, like a confrontation. Okay. I don't like that. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Yeah. And what what profession would you like to attempt other than your own? Mm. Well, I'm doing what I love. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I'm really into languages. So maybe being some type of like interpreter for like the UN or something. Okay. If I could learn more like Russian, like I can speak French. Oui, je peux parler un peu de français. Alors, pour les personnes qui parlent français, pardon, mais je pouvais parler un peu de, un peu de français pour vous. I have no idea. What I know, <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully I didn't make any errors in there for my French people. <laughs> But yeah, maybe something along those lines. Like I just, and I also love managing things. So like if there's like somebody that's like huge, like managing their schedule, okay. something like that, like an assistant or just like, you got to be here at this time and yeah. something like that. All right. What would you not like to do? What profession would you not like to do? Um, anything that's uh, scary. So like, let's see what's scary. Um, I don't know, something where there's heights. Okay. So something that's really high off the ground. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Last question: If if heaven exists, Ooh. what would you like God to say to you when you get there? Um. <laughs> Maybe something along the lines of like, "Great job." <laughs> Wait, that's not good. You can't rely. People can't say that to you. You have to be happy within yourself. So I'd like him to be like, you followed your purpose. You did your diet. Like you followed what you were meant to do in this world. And like you, like you did that with joy. And like, it was a pleasure watching you fulfill your purpose down there. Something like that. Yeah. Cause that's what I want to do down here. Like I have a lot of purposes. Does, can you say that a lot of, I have. I don't know if you, that's a you word. You can say it. It's okay. Oh, okay. I don't <laughs> you, know. you have a lot. You have a lot of per, different purpose. Purpose. I. I don't know. I just. <laughs> uh, okay, but we understand the gist. Yeah, I, just, I know what you mean. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of things that I meant to do here, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that I do them and not live again with that sense of regret. Like that was how many years of my life. Like you mm. know, I did gymnastics until I was 22. I'm 29 now. That was way more than half of my life yeah. and i'm not saying i was you know it was just two hours a day like that was the majority of my life and to feel that way so the rest of my life is just like knowing myself living with purpose mm -hmm. like with intention with direction and being a little bit more aware spiritually of what's around me because mm -hmm. i think that's important too and that helps elevate us to different levels different yeah. heights 100 percent. thank you this you're welcome been, this has been dope Okay, cool. Let people know, like, where can where can we find you online? Uh, Brittany Habib. It's spelled differently, so it's B R I T T N E E H A B B I B. So at Brittany Habib, that is my Instagram. Um, Facebook would be the same thing. Um, I don't know what else people want. I mean, G, G powered. Like, tell them about. Oh, girl powered. Yes, that. follow girl powered, please. That is at G. P O W E R D, girl powered. Okay. And um, there's one more that you need to follow. It's the next edition, and that's where I work also full time. And that is mm, at. Oh, shoot, I'm trying <laughs> to think of what it is. <laughs> it's next edition. N E X T E D I T I O N N X E. The next edition. Okay. little snippet on that before we go. The next edition. Go for it. It's a company that produces music and digital media. Okay. We also put together shows and productions. And um, right now we are in the process of working on a feature film. 
that is filming in Jamaica. Awesome. And um, I'm the lead producer for that and also the lead actress in that movie. So please follow the next edition so you can see updates on what we're doing. Yeah, we're going to keep you posted, people. <laughs> Don't sleep on her. Thanks. <laughs> we're out. Peace. Okay. Peace, Bye. Eh? Au revoir. Au revoir, Au revoir. mes amis. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, people. Thank you for listening to this episode and thank you, Brittany, for coming on and sharing those words of wisdom. Make sure you find her on Instagram at Brittany Habib, which is spelled B-R-I-T-T-N-E-E-H-A-B-B-I-B and see all the great work she does with the young women in her g Powered program. So if you're in Toronto, make sure that you, if you know anyone who might be interested in the program, get in touch with her and I'm sure she'll be able to help out um, and direct and give some words of wisdom um, whatever the situation is and make sure you to go to www.iwishitinquit.com get your t-shirts, get your hoodies, get your mugs in time for Christmas step into the new year saying I wish I didn't quit so until next time people have a great Christmas see you in the new year peace out